Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the last session. My name is um, Li Wei Tai, and um, I'm very pleased to introduce the next speaker, Yejin Kaiser, um, Kaiser Wu, um, who is a postdoctoral fellow um, in my laboratory at uh, MIT. So, um, so Yejin um, completed her uh, graduate training um, initially at UT Southwestern Medical Center and later um, at the Stanford University um, under the supervision of Dr. Thomas Sudoff. And um, her um, thesis project mainly focused on um, um, the um, analysis of the structural function um, uh, of uh, complexing C-terminal sequences in regulating um, snare-mediated um, vesicle fusion. Um, in my laboratory, um, Yujing um, is interested in the autism spectrum um, disorder gene CHDA and um, its involvement in brain development and wind signaling. Um, Yujing um, is uh, now a Simons um, postdoctoral fellow. So, um, Yujing, please. So thank you, Li Wei, for your kind introduction. And I would also like to thank the organizers and the board of directors for um, inviting me to this um, great um, event. Um, as a bench scientist, um, this day has been a, in a great um, um, inspiration and also remind me of what I'm actually working on, which is, you know, sometimes, you know, gets, away, gets in the way while I'm thinking about my favorite protein or favorite gene. So um, today, uh, I'd like to uh, share with you our ongoing effort to understand the etiology of autism by characterizing the underlying uh, molecular path uh, pathway. Um, during embryonic development, um, our brains go through um, immense uh, morphological changes. And during these changes, um, it is critical that number of neurons um, that are made and the, their location in the brain and also the connection that they make with each other are, uh, are tightly regulated. And this is governed by many complex cell signaling pathways. And autism is thought to be caused by um, dysregulation of one or more of these um, pathways. Um, recently, a series of exome sequencing of sporadic autism uh, spectrum disorder has been reported where they look for changes in the protein coding region of the genes. Um, this was done by um, um, major groups such as um, Evan Eichler and um, Mark Daly. Um, so they discovered that many of these um, severely mutated genes converged to a common functional pathway, and one that was prominent was beta catenin mediated wind pathway. So wind pathway is uh, important for many aspects of brain development. Now when wind protein binds to its receptor, beta catenin, which is a key mediator of this process, can be saved from degradation and enters the nucleus. Then um, beta catenin activates the transcription of many wind target genes that are important for axis patterning and cell fate, uh, proliferation, migration, and neurite branching. So among the autism genes that cluster to um, this beta catenin wind signaling pathway, CHD8 um, had several uh, um, recurrent protein altering mutations. More interestingly, patients with uh, CHD8 mutations had larger than uh, average head circumference, which is one of um, a hallmark uh, feature of autism. Even before the exome sequencing data uh, came out, CHD8 had been also associated with intellectual disability and um, severe um, developmental disorder called CHARGE syndrome. CHD8, or chromodomain helicase DNA binding 8, uh, has many important uh, roles. For example, um, it is uh, involved in axis formation in zebrafish, and it directly uh, binds to beta catenin 
and was previously reported to downregulate the wind targeted genes such as axin 2. It also suppresses apoptosis by suppressing the p53 level. Also, it has chromatin remodeling function where it modulates the transcription. Also, CHC8 knockout mice dies very early during development, suggesting that CHD8 is important um, in the early embryonic survival. So we became particularly interested in CHD8 because of its, um, uh, because of its uh, role in regulating the wind signaling pathway could explain the uh, pathology of autism caused by CHD8 mutation. Therefore, we hypothesize that CHD8, is regula CHD8 regulates the brain development through regulating the wind signaling. So first, to test whether CHD8 controls wind pathway, we took a very straightforward um, uh, approach called luciferase assay. So we express luciferase um, reporter construct in the cell lines. Uh, which will uh, monitor the level of wind activity in different conditions. And to see um, uh, how the loss of CHD8, uh, uh, how the loss of CHD affects the wind signaling, uh, we used the short hairpin against uh, CHD8, short hairpin RNA against CHD8, to um, uh, suppress the gene expression. We tested several and, and chose two with the highest efficiency. So we measured the relative level of luminescence in different conditions. When wind uh, pathway is excite, uh, stimulated by wind protein, uh, there is a huge increase in the wind activity in, in those cells. In contrast, with loss of CHDA, we see significant decrease in the wind uh, activity, suggesting that CHDA is a positive regulator of uh, wind pathway. And this decrease was fully compensated when we overexpress CHDA uh, on top of CHDA um, knockdown. We also tested the opposite, where we overexpressed CHDA. Um, after wind stimulation, and we saw a um, significant increase, further increase in the wind uh, signaling. Um, so with this CHD knockdown and overexpression data, we now think that CHD8 reg positively regulates wind signaling in vitro. Initially, the, our own data surprised us because previous data, um, as, as I briefly mentioned, suggested CHD8 to be a negative regulator. We have repeated our, our experiment in many different uh, conditions, so we are quite uh, convinced with, our, with the phenotype that we see. However, we are doing additional many, uh, many additional experiments to understand the different, uh, ob different observations that we made. So next, we ask uh, whether CHDA regulates the brain development. To monitor neuronal development, uh, in developing mouse brain um, with loss of CHD8, we use a method called in uterine electroporation. We inject CHD8 uh, short hairpin RNA and GFP, green fluorescent protein, into the ventricle uh, of embryonic mouse brain, and we flow electric current to transfect the DNA of our interest into the developing cortex. This is how a slice of cortex looks after we do in it uterine electroporation at embryonic day 13 and collect the brains at embryonic day 16. At the ventricular zone, the cells go through mitosis to increase the number of uh, progenitor cells, and the cells that exit the cell cycle would differentiate it into either neuron or glial cell and climb up to the cortical plate. We label the proliferating cells with BRDU, and the cells are actively undergoing cell cycle with KI67. We compare the proliferation rate between the control and CHD knockdown, where we basically measure, count the number of BRDU-positive cells. And we, we saw significant decrease 
a proliferation with loss of CACD8. Among the proliferating cells, we counted the uh, number of cells that exit the cell cycle. And we saw with CACD8 knockdown, there are much uh, uh, larger uh, number of uh, cells that exit uh, prematurely. This suggested to us that CACD8 is, is very important in keeping the cells from differentiating uh, 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 immaturely. Now, with a similar experimental setup, but by letting the neurons develop until um, postnatal day seven, we could compare the neuronal morphology between the com uh, control and the CACD8 knockdown neurons. Now, dendritic branching is important because it determines the number of connections that one neuron can make uh, with another neuron. And we counted the number of dendrites uh, by Scholl analysis. And what we observed was, surprisingly, with CACDA knockdown, there were significantly fewer number of dendrites throughout um, uh, the, the um, distance from cell body. So looking at the proliferation data and the dendritic uh, branching data, uh, we think that CHD regulates a big portion of brain development. And then we ask whether the role of CHD during wind signaling pathway and its role during um, brain development are, are linked together. So to do this, um, to reconfirm that um, CHD regulates wind signaling pathway, we decided to over, uh, we decided to rescue the CHD loss of function phenotype by overactivating the wind signaling pathway. And we, we chose to uh, use a beta catenin which is a key mediator of this process. So here's a luciferase assay showing that CHD knockdown suppresses the wind activity. And by overexpressing beta catenin over CACA knockdown, um, we could completely uh, rescue the loss of function phenotype. Next, we measured the proliferation with CACA knockdown and beta catenin uh, over uh, rescue. So with CACA knockdown, as I showed you previously, there is decrease in proliferation and increase in cell cycle exit. And by expressing beta catenin, um, it could completely rescue both proliferation and cell cycle exit phenotype. And we also revisited the dendrite branching, where again, C beta catenin was fully uh, able to um, re uh, replace the lost um, dendrite numbers uh, compared to um, CHDA knockdown. And this, um, all these um, beta catenin rescue data suggested to us that indeed CHDA seemed to regulate the neuronal development process by regulating uh, the beta catenin mediated wind signaling pathway. And we're currently doing additional uh, many experiments to determine whether the molecular uh, mechanism of this process is due to direct protein protein interaction or whether it's by regulation of transcription. So far, I have shown you that CAC8 uh, positively regulates wind signaling and that CAC8 promotes the proliferation in the brain and that CAC8 also promotes the dendritic branching. Lastly, uh, briefly, I'd like to share with you um, some of the ideas that we, we're currently pursuing in order to understand how CHD8 mutations found in autism patients may have affected neurodevelopment, we decided to recapitulate their mutations into um, uh, human cell lines and mouse models. Um, and to introduce specific um, mutations into mouse and human uh, CHD8 genes, uh, we, we are using um, genome editing technology such as CRISPR-Cas system where um, guide RNA would recruit the um, um, uh, transcription uh, complex to make a, a double-strand break in the genome and also tail nuclease 
where uh, um, dimerized Foquan enzyme would SNP the gene guided by the upstream and downstream sequences. Now we directly inject the uh, talon into mouse one cell embryo to create a CHD mutant mice uh, in much shorter time frame compared to the conventional um, gene targeting method. And with these um, CHDA mutant mice, we're planning to um, uh, investigate uh, how the, those mutations uh, altered the neuron uh, brain development as well as um, behavior. Also, we're in the process of creating um, human embryonic stem cells with uh, the CHDA mutations found in the patients. Um, we will di uh, differentiate them into neurons and examine their neuronal morphology and um, uh, synaptic properties. So we very much hope that um, with the knowledge that we gain uh, by characterizing the role of CAC8 will eventually lead to um, developing new uh, therapeutic um, uh, approaches. With that, I'd like to thank um, my mentor, Li Hui, for her continuous um, uh, enthusiastic support. And Omar Durag is a talented graduate student sitting right there who has um, produced most of the data that I have shown you today. And Dr. Wolfgang Furst is our collaborator in Germany uh, on CSDA mutant mice. I would also like to thank my funding source, Simon Center for the Social Brain, for generous support. And thank you very much for your uh, attention. I was interested to understand the connection between the embryonic phenotype you saw and the macrocephaly. It seemed like it, it was a contradiction there. What do you think explains that? Well, yeah, I, I, people started asking us uh, the same question. So what I would like to start off by saying is that um, although we guess that those CAC mutations found in patients uh, is, could be loss of function, however, we just don't know like what it does, like the, whether it's, it's gonna be um, dominant negative or even like gain of function. So, at, but at least um, by, by if, we, if we really believe, if you believe um, the data that I showed you where CHD8 um, uh, activates the wind signaling pathway and also activates the you know, beta continuum mediated uh, function. Well, uh, Chris Walsh's lab has shown that overexpression of beta continuum, like thereby you know, activation of wind pathway would create macrocephaly, right? So in a way, our data, like the function of CHD8 would fit very well with it. And we'll see with the, with the possibly mouse line and with the, with the human cell lines, uh, whether CHD8 mutations would be, you know, would activate the wind signaling or downregulate, we, we just don't know yet. Maybe you could look at uh, wind pathway markers and expression in yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like yeah. That. Exactly. Um, we're we're doing that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Uh, quick question. I'm thinking about you know um, from that you know pathway and system. Uh, have you linked that you know the histone domain with the mTOR and the mTOR? No, not at uh, all. The reason not is that. All. that we have the common drug, the rapamycin, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, uh, which could be, you know, targetable. Yeah, that should and be an interesting. And change the, you know, the methylase uh, system, mm -hmm. which is downstream of that. You know, yeah, that should be, I mean, as I mentioned, CHC8 has, has several functions, and for now, we're really focusing on its, like, uh, role in, in wind signaling pathway, but that that's definitely a, an interesting yeah. And then you're opinion. right, because, you know, if you look into the uh, listing of the uh, autism gene, you know, those change in the mutation, several involved in the mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, they should go, go hand in hand, exactly. Yeah. Yeah.